that wasn't very smart. Hey, welcome back to Creasy's Workshop. I'm John and this is part four of the Stuart number no. nine engine build. And this week we're doing these um, bearing blocks, the bearing journals and uh, finishing things off to height. Okay, here's our setup here. I've got the, the uh, fixture plate bolted down with strap clamps and I've set up a one, two, three block on this flange here and I've dialed it in as absolutely accurate as I could. It's within one tenth of a thousandth. So I can't get it. I can't get it any better than that. I've tried and tried and tried. So that's absolutely as accurate as I can get. And now the first thing we need to do is um, now that we've got this set up perpendicular to the mill is we've got to establish our heights. So um, there's a, a defined height for this sliding uh, surface here and it's defined based on, the, on a distance below the centre of this boss. So what I need to do is measure this diameter and halve it and touch off off the off the top surface of that flange and uh, and then I can measure and then I can then I can figure out the um, the center point of that which will be the center point of our cylinder the center point of that flange also I can use the edge finders on the two sides to get myself uh, the, along the y-axis to the middle so I'll set that up now and then we can measure down and and take this surface to the correct height uh, and then then we can look at these bearings the bearings need to be uh, a distance away from the center uh, they need to be a certain width and they need to be a certain height and they obviously need that uh, that um, groove milled out So we've got, now I can use these two measurements to uh, calculate the width. So the DRO says 68.765 and that's 10 mil bigger than what we, what we, what our actual, what our actual diameter should be. So let's check that, we'll write that down, DRO. 68.765 so that says 2.313 2.313 inches now what I've done now is I've I've uh, I've just set the the set up the the cutter the cutting tool above the center line and above this flange and I've used this adjustable parallel uh, so what I want to do is measure that height between there and there because we want to get uh, we want to set our height exactly based on the center of this flange so what we do is we put our um, we put our uh, adjustable parallel in there and we feel the wiggle and we adjust that so it's nice and snug square and snug yeah all right so 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 now what i can do is measure this um this this height here and put that height directly into my dro z axis i'll type it in and then we'll be we'll be set our zero will be this zero and then we can offset um, to the center point which we've measured by measuring this diameter and then we'll be exactly zero on the center line and that's really important because all of these dimensions of this sliding plate here and these bearings are all measured from the center line of the cylinder so we want to be as accurate as possible getting that vertical access we've we've used the edge finders to get the center the center line 
of, the, of this flange and we've used the, uh, the, the, the dial gauge to align it so it's square so hopefully we've got everything okay so um, theoretically this tool uh, is zeroed on at the, the zero for the z-axis for this tool setup it should be right on the center of this um, of this di diameter here so because I don't trust myself very much I, uh, I've machined up a piece of aluminium which is is quite a tight fit in there and and uh, I've tapped it in so it's it's hard up against the shoulder and I'm gonna set this to zero zero not zero 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 vertically and I'm gonna see what happens see what it looks like when we actually take a cut because I can see the facing I can I can me I, I can measure it but I can also just see from the from the from the facing cut where Now that does not look good to me. I think we're below. So let's measure, tap that out and we'll measure it. All right, well I've checked that and uh, against my measurements and it turns out it was worth doing because um, uh, we're a thousandth of an inch too deep uh, so what I can do is uh, adjust my DRO uh, and take a thousandth off and we should be we should be correct so that was worth doing I want to get it as accurate as we can all right we're finally ready to take our first cuts now I'm a little bit above my zero here make sure I'm on the right side yes and um, I'm going to take these tops back down so they'll be exactly on center with the center line of the cylinder. And um, because I was tapping that end plug in uh, quite a lot, I've um, I've checked that alignment and it was out. So um, I've readjusted it and it's as close as I can get it. So. Put it in gear. I had it out of gear because I was using the, the dial gauge. Okay, we've um, taken those down to finished height, which is our zero. And now what I'm going to do is center the cutter over where this where this uh, dimension should be in the middle and uh, and I'm going to take that down uh, to almost to depth uh, so this this center line here is 5.625 inches and we need to go down 0.375 so we're right on 5.625 Okay, now let's see how we how we did. We check our measurements. This should be three seven five. And what do we got? Three seven five point five. Close enough. Half a yeah, uh, five tenths too deep. That won't hurt anyone. Now we'll put our 
adjustable parallel in here. Get a nice feel for it. Lock it down. Oops. Feels still good. Yep. That's nice. Now what do we got here? Point five oh oh four five. That's pretty good. Actually, there's a bit of variation. Point five oh oh. Oh, there we go. All balls. Yeah, that's fine. Lovely, beautiful. So now we just have to do the sides. So we'll have to go from our center and go out um, the uh, the distance that we need and mill that out and then bring these side cheeks in as well. Really happy with this, this is looking nice. Okay, we're at 364 out and 4375 down, so final cut. Well, we've finished our bearing housings and they're all accurately milled. Now, the last thing we need to do before we change this tool out, which is set to our, a known height, is to take this um, sliding surface, uh, this part here, down to... Um, it needs to come down to five eighths from the center line of this of this boss. Oh. Oh, that wasn't very smart. We've got a clearance issue with that boss there, so I'm going to have to re recalibrate my height, change the tool. Dear, oh dear. Well, that's one for the cold open. Damn it. No damage done, no. Bit of a scratch, maybe. So the next job is to drill four holes in these um, in these bearing journals uh, for uh, the studs that will hold the actual bearing brasses in place. Oh. 
Okay, so here we are. We've got all our holes drilled, all these surfaces milled. The only things left to do on this sole plate is this uh, this mounting surface here, which mounts that arm there, which holds the, um, the valve guide. And there's another one on the other side, which is for a pump. Um, so, pretty happy with that. I think it's looking really good. Now, uh, so I'll take tear down the fixture, take that off, and we'll mount it 90 degrees in. This is a setup from the other side, so you can see I'm taking down that surface there. And that surface is used for a little bracket that will stick out. So. Okay, that's it for this episode. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.